Over the weekend, there was a shooting in the Olympia shopping mall in Munich, Germany, specifically in the mall itself and also at a nearby McDonald's. Nine people were killed, plus the shooter, who is 18 year old Ali David Sanbali. Thirty five others were injured. He ended up shooting himself in the head. He was actually on the run while a manhunt ensued involving twenty three hundred officers from the immediate and surrounding area. Ultimately, the shooter was found dead about a mile from the mall. The perpetrator was Munich born, an Iranian German dual national. He was heard shouting, I am German and I was born here after an onlooker shouted anti Turkish abuse at him. He had no criminal record. He was the son of Muslims from Iran who came to Germany seeking asylum in the 1990s. And his parents told police that they believed their son had possibly converted to Christianity, but that he wasn't particularly religious. He was described, Lewis, as a loner who was bullied, played violent video games, was, quote, obsessed with mass shootings, was under psychiatric care. He actually compiled a scrapbook of news clippings about mass shootings, owned several books about mass shootings and actually visited the site of a 2009 school shooting in Germany, reportedly taking pictures there. A classmate of Sanboli said that Sanboli changed his profile picture on the WhatsApp messaging service to a photo of the Norwegian terrorist Anders Bering Breivik. This is actually a very familiar pattern, just not from Germany. And I had a bunch of gun fetishists and ammo sexuals, Lewis, over the weekend posting links to how strict Germany's gun safety laws are as evidence that gun safety laws can't prevent shootings. This is so fallacious and bogus. If anything, this shooting reminds us that gun safety legislation actually does work because Germany has so few shootings, so few police shootings. We did that story years ago, Lewis, about how rare it is for German police to use firearms. So posting that Germany has strict gun safety laws after a shooting actually proves that the shootings are very rare. And Germany has these very strict gun safety laws. The shooter did not have a gun license. He was able to obtain a Glock nine millimeter pistol as well as 300 rounds of ammunition. And, and what's fascinating, and we really have to think this through, is that Germany doesn't have a particularly low rate of gun ownership. There's a 2015 article from The New York Times which says that back in 2013, Germany had 1.5 million guns, uh, gun owners rather, and 5.5 million weapons with a population of 80 million. This is not nearly as high a rate of gun ownership as we have here in the United States. But the point is, you can get guns in Germany legally, but gun ownership is not a right in the way that it is here in the United States. To get a gun in Germany, you have to get a certificate that proves you know how to handle both the weapon and the ammunition. You have to uh, prove that you can store the gun safe, safely in a place that is accessible only to you. And this process takes months. You also have to be 18 before you can get any weapon. And if you're under 25, you also need to go through a psychological exam. So when people post links about the strict gun laws in Germany and despite that there was a shooting, what you're missing is that those strict gun laws are actually connected to a very, very low shooting rate. And we've talked about this before, Lewis. No individual person is going to be 100 percent prevented from getting guns and using them to kill people no matter what law you pass. That's not the point. The point is let's big picture make it more difficult to get guns, make it so that you can actually go through a process that we feel is effective and thorough. And overall, that has actually kept the gun crime rate very, very, very low in Germany. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. Also, just another one of those incidents where we have someone who is clearly disturbed. I right. mean, when you change your your profile picture to, to Anders Breivik, I yeah. mean, and you're, you're collecting information in books and pictures and a scrapbook about mass shootings. How much more information do you really need to know someone's about to snap? Well, some individuals questioning if he was under psychiatric care, psychiatrists, mental health professionals have a duty to report individuals if and only if they believe that they are actually a danger. Uh, at, that that they pose a danger that they could actually take real world violent actions doesn't we mean they're competent. We don't know exactly what 
was discussed under the psychiatric care of this individual. A lot of people immediately pointing fingers at whoever was the psychiatrist here. We, we just don't know anything about that right now. We don't know a lot, but I mean, I'm guessing we, we, we knew that people were aware of the Andrus Brevik picture. I'm guessing that the parents were aware of the collection of materials. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of questions. Very, very disturbing story. Gamefly is sort of like Netflix for video games. They have over 8,000 new and classic games for Xbox One, Xbox 360, PS4, PS3, Wii, and a bunch of other platforms. And you can play as many games as you want for one monthly fee. And if you find some games you want to keep, you can buy them for a low used price. There's never any due dates or late fees. And our audience can get a free 30-day trial at GameFlyOffer.com slash TDPS. The games are shipped directly to you with return envelopes included. There's no contracts, and you can rent games through the mobile app. Get the free 30-day trial for the David Pakman Show audience and support our show by going to GameFlyOffer.com slash TDPS.